Hello all of my lovely artists. This is your friendly neighborhood art teacher Miss Asbury and today we are going to be continuing our unit on architecture. Last time we talked we designed the Taj Mahal that we can find in India and now we're going to do something a little bit more generic. We're going to be doing something called a pagoda. Now pagodas are a kind of structure that we find in Asia and they're very unique. It's not really something that we see in America, but they are very cool. So, what you're going to do for this project is you are going to need a piece of paper, a pencil, and if you've got it, something to color with. We're going to put our paper in the portrait orientation this time, so straight up and down. And as with most buildings, we're going to start with a horizon line. So below halfway, almost, I would only go about this far up from the bottom of the page. Start from one edge, go to the other, get it as straight as you can, just do your best for our horizon line. And we are going to start with a rectangular big old structure, but it's going to stay pretty low to the ground. So I'm going to go about three fingers, maybe, maybe four out from the from the edge of my page. I'm going to go up with a vertical line only about to right there. And then same thing on the other side, four fingers up, match it to my other one best I can. And then I think that one's a little longer. Then cap it off with a horizontal line. Don't make fun of me if not all my lines are straight because I am just using a straight Sharpie so it's easy to see. So that's going to be the first level of our pagodas. Pagodas remind me a lot of a tiered cake. If you've ever drawn a really fancy cake, you know you have the bottom tier, then it's a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller. That's how I like to think of pagodas. So their roofs, they're kind of a trapezoid shape with a twist. So when you're starting to draw a trapezoid, its corners are going to be kind of curvy pointy if that makes sense. I don't have a good fancy way of saying that but it's a trapezoid that you've kind of go whoop whoop like a Cheshire cat smile just like that. Now we're only going to focus on the main structure first so we won't add any details yet that will come later. Your second layer you're going to go in a bit from your trapezoid do two more vertical lines don't make them too tall because we still have several tiers to go this time we're going to do another weird curvy Q trapezoid. It's almost like it's got cat ears on top. Alright, and then we might have room for two more layers as long as we don't go too tall. So I'm going to have one here, another trapezoid, and then one more. So. For this one, you could do another trapezoid on top, or since it's completely finished, you could do a curvy triangle. Whew, I barely had room for that, thank goodness. Now, pagodas can be many differently, can be designed in many different ways. It can be more open air, which means kind of like a gazebo, you can see all the way through it, it's not enclosed by walls. It could be completely enclosed by walls, or you could have a mixture of both. So for example, for this bottom, I might want it to be enclosed by walls. So what I might do is I might even have some steps leading up to the door. And steps are just skinny rectangles on top of one another, as many as you want. I'll stay there, and I'll do a nice entryway with a half circle half oval, sorry. And I do want to say your pagoda should not look just like mine. The main structure can be similar, it can be exactly the same, but for your designs I want you to put your thinking cap on and think of, hey, what can make this place look super fancy? So let's see, what else can I do for my entrance? I might do some windows here to the side. Just like that. And let's see. I know you might see some Asian lanterns, like some Chinese lanterns. Or maybe even some string lights. That would be an option. 
Now, if you see something that I do that you particularly like, you're more than welcome to use it. Just don't have it all look exactly like mine. Like, you might do your lanterns way up here. You might do them for every single layer. It's up to you. The more detail, the better. So, if I move on to my roof, for example, I want shingles. If you just leave this blank, it's going to be boring. So, to do kind of like dragon scale tiles, which are my personal favorite, you just do kind of that lacy pattern where it's just a bunch of half circles shoulder to shoulder like that but on the next layer see like these points where they come back up those points go on the tippy top of the circle above it so see where I'm matching those up to the tops of each circle it's almost like a ball bouncing, so it goes up, down, up, down, or it's more like down, up, down, up, down, just like that. See how they kind of alternate? We're going to do the same thing all the way down. All right, there's my first roof. Now we'll go ahead and move on to the next roof. They don't have to be the same for each one. You could do this however you want. For this one, I might do more of a crisscross pattern. That's fine. Just make sure you're doing it neatly and not rushing. There's my second one. Make sure your lines are evenly spaced to make it look very nice and elegant. Now, I kind of liked how these diagonal lines looked by themselves, so I'll do that for my next one. Alright, and then I'll repeat my same pattern for my last one. Alright, so there are my roofs done. Now, let's talk about the next structure going up. Now, remember I said they can be open air or maybe not. Maybe I want this structure to be a place where people can go up and look out into the environment so I need to make columns to support its weight this is something that architects have to think about when they're designing things is this gonna bear weight is stuff gonna come crashing down if I make it this way they have a lot of things to think about to make sure that things are both pretty and safe so there's that so far I might even make it look like arches on the back because why not and even if you want to put some people in there, I'm going to put some people in there. Don't have to be detailed, but I'll put some people in there. They're looking outside. Let's see, let me put one more. Maybe a child. Alright, so there's another one like that. Now for the next one, it might be more closed off again. Maybe it's just some plain windows all the way around like that or there might be let's see there might be a balcony out here maybe the door is right here and I can't see it but maybe there's just a little balcony area here with a railing to keep anybody from falling off See how I'm just thinking about it as I go? That's really important to just think about, hey, my pagoda looks like it needs a little something here. And you can add it however you feel comfortable. Like here, this looks a little boring to me. I might add more lights or lanterns. All right, and then for my last one, I kind of want like a nice circular window kind of like that now when i'm looking back at this bottom section i think it still looks a little too boring for me and i'm trying to think about how i can fix this remember a lot of art is problem solving so you got to think about ways to make stuff a little fancier i might even put some decoration some landscaping out here so i might do some vases for decoration 
and they might have little patterns on them. I might do like some vines crawling up the vase. Put some art on my art. All right, and then maybe, you know, maybe off to the sides, maybe I want some weird crooked trees because it's my art, why not? I always like to start my trees with kind of a Y shape and then I just keep forking it off like this. Almost like there's some tinier Ys. I might add some more branches like that. If it's winter, you can just keep going like this and call it a day. If you want leaves on it, you can stop adding your forks at some point and add some leaves. I'll add a couple leaves. I just like to do squiggles for my leaves because from this far away, you wouldn't see every single leaf. It would be more like little clumps. So that's all I'm doing. I'm just doing little clumps. I'm not going too fancy pants here. All right, and then on this side, I could add another tree, sure. Maybe this one's a baby. And again, you can do different things. You don't have to do stuff exactly like me because you're not trying to just regurgitate to puke up my art. You're trying to make your own, express your ideas for what you might think a pagoda should look like. Even if you want to, you could look up pagodas on Google. Here's how you spell it. P-A-G-O-D-A. You can look up pagodas online and look up some to get some inspiration. That's totally an option. All right, now in my sky, it's looking a little blank. I might add a little sun or maybe moon if it's nighttime. That would have been a good idea, but I already used a Sharpie, so too late. <laughs> All right. Now, something that I keep thinking about, and this is just because it's a personal choice, but there's a movie I watch called Spirited Away. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of it, but it's one of my favorite movies of all time, and it has a bathhouse that looks a lot like a pagoda, and there's a scene where there are these paper-like birds flying through the sky, so I kind of want to add some of those paper birds. They looked weird. They looked like this. But again, my art so I can add whatever. So if you want to add a dragon flying through the sky, I will not stop you. Ooh, you, somebody could even have like somebody flying a kite in the back. Maybe there's a kid that we just can't see here. I just get so excited, guys. I love adding detail to art because it really makes stuff look so much better when you take that extra time. All right, let's see, can I add anything else? I just keep adding stuff, I can't help it. I'm going crazy. Maybe these could be double doors. Maybe these could have blinds. Ooh, maybe there could be a pond. Oops. I got Sharpie on my desk. I can't believe that actually worked. <laughs> Moving on. Maybe there's a pond off to the side with some cool garden rocks. See guys, art's just about playing. It's I'm adding moss to the rocks because I can. The more you add to this piece, the more beautiful it's going to look. So I really encourage you, take your time, look up some pagodas online. Find some things that'll really interest you to make this look as amazing as it can. I'm gonna add koi fish to the pond too while I'm talking. <laughs> Not all of them are winners, but it's okay. I'm drawing a Sharpie, I'll give myself grace. I'm just doing the best I can. And then we'll give it some wavy lines to make it look like it's actually water. Could even add a bench. It's all about the details, my friends. I'll say it till I'm blue in the face.
Maybe somebody's reading. Okay, before I get too ahead of myself, this video has lasted forever. But, that is all I have for you today. Let's look at it in all of its glory. I think that's as far as it'll zoom out. But, that is an example of an Asian pagoda. So before we go, let's talk a little bit about the origin of the pagoda. Okay, so the pagoda is something that we find in Asia and even some parts of India, and it was really for, it's really a hodgepodge of different things as it grew over history. The reason it was originally built is because the structures symbolized sacred mountains and they were used to kind of house different things like relics or even used as tombs for saints and kings. So it kind of had to grow. It had to grow up just like a child. It had to figure out its true meaning, but it started off as burial ground or even a place to house artifacts for certain important aspects, almost like a museum. So Buddhism and Hinduism are two religions that we see in Asia and India, and these pagodas were really used for those purposes. Let me make sure I'm not missing anything else in my notes about it. No, I think, I think that about covers it. So it could be used as kind of a museum to house artifacts, or it could be used as burial ground to hold remains of saints or kings, and it was mainly used for the religions of Buddhism, which is spelled B U D D H I S M, and Hinduism. Both of these are things that you will eventually talk about in history class. But if you want to get ahead of the game, your teacher asks you about what you know about Buddhism and Hinduism, you can talk about the Asian pagoda and its tower-like structure. Without further ado, I'm signing off. Please remember to draw this picture, or sorry, design your own pagoda. Don't make this look exactly like mine. And then put it in the Dropbox in week 19. You can just take a picture on your laptop's webcam and submit it through there. Alright guys. Signing off. Have a wonderful week and I'll see you next time. Bye.